Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our COVID media briefing for today. Today is Tuesday, January 19th. I'm Lorena Negron, Communication Administrator for the City of Laredo. Like always, we want to express our condolences to the families who have lost a loved one due to COVID-19. We start our media briefing with our Management Coordinator and Laredo Fire Chief, Mr. Guillermo Hurd. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Negron. Uh, I wanted to start off and to tell the public that uh, I know we've sent out in some emergency messages, but I will, will reemphasize there's no need to panic. It's just awareness. That's all we're saying to the public. It's the same message that we've been saying for the last several months and we'll continue to say it. Um, this is the message that the healthcare providers keep telling us when we're talking with them and the hospitals of, of that they continue to work digitally, diligently in the background, uh, but they are getting overwhelmed. Um, and as we mentioned before, everybody can take a small part in the reduction of the virus by wearing your mask, washing your hands, social distancing, not going to those activities that you don't need to. And that we will continue working as a city with our community partners, but it is gonna take a big community effort. Uh, with that, the hospitals are at a very high capacity. Uh, we continue to climb and climb um, and be at the high 40s. And the hospitals do have several patients in the emergency rooms currently in overflow. I will say something that the hospitals are controlling the traffic and visiting the hospital this weekend with our health authority. We, we noticed uh, the spirit of the nurses and how well they're taking care of their, of their patients, of the community. But they are at a very high capacity. I will reemphasize this at the same time is when they're focusing on COVID patients, it also takes away from those regular heart attack, stroke patients. So all of that is a balance. And as I mentioned, we can all take part in this by helping and doing those small things at home. Uh, we are uh, working with the state and the hospitals on deploying tents for inpatient status in the community. Currently, there are, uh, the areas are being surveyed and deployed in uh, two of the hospitals. This will increase the capacity significantly. Uh, but this will have to, we will have to place patients outside in a, in tents that are negative pressure, but still, this is not the ideal situation. Um, we do have sufficient vents for our patients here. Uh, we have made a request for more, uh, because we are increasing the ICU capacity at Laredo specialty, because that, that is something that is needed and speaking with the health authority, we do have a certain number that we need to get to. Uh, uh, the infusion center has been a great success. Uh, it did give 109 total infusions from Monday to Saturday last week. Um, and that is, uh, that is the hospitals are starting to send their patients to our infusion center so they can worry about uh, the ER patients. Uh, 109 is 109 patients or citizens that should not go to the hospital. That's something that we should think about it that way. Uh, seguimos coordinando con la comunidad. Uh, una, uh, vamos a decirle en la comunidad que el mensaje que hemos mandado este fin de semana es para que la gente no más tenga en su mente lo que está pasando, no es para dar pánico. Uh, es el mismo mensaje que hemos dado todos estos mismos me meses, pero es algo que nuestros uh, enfermeros y doctores y hospitales nos dicen que están trabajando muy, muy duro. Y pero necesitamos ayuda de la comunidad para bajar este, este virus que está en nuestra comunidad. Uh, los hospitales tienen, están en más de 48% uh, y, y seguimos uh, uh, coordinando con el Estado para pa agarrar unas carpas para ponerlas afuera de los hospitales. Con, el, con estas carpas uh, vamos, a decidir, eh, vamos a dar más cuartos para los pacientes de covid y seguimos coordinando todavía para poner pacientes en otras áreas. Um, se, tenemos suficientes ventiladores ahorita en la comunidad, pero con eso, como quiera, estamos pidiendo más porque uno de los hospitales va, va, va a tener más cuartos intensivos, que es algo muy bueno para la comunidad. En el Infusion Center que está en Hayes dio cien, 109 me, me, medicamentos para la comunidad la semana pasada. Eso es un, algo muy bueno para la comunidad porque esos son cientos nuevos pacientes que no se deben enfermar más pa, pa, y que recuperen en su casa y no van a tener que ir al hospital 
a más ayuda. Uh, that's it for my report and I stand by for questions. Thank you, Chief Hurd, for your report. Now we hear from Laredo's Health Director, Richard Chamberlain. Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to see everybody once again. More than 50 COVID-related fatalities have been reported in Laredo during the month of January. Texas has reported more than 3,600 fatalities in the last 14 days. Every lot lost impacts countless more. These are our loved ones, our neighbors, our fellow Texans. They are not just statistics. Over the last seven days, Laredo reported 3,531 new cases. It is likely never been easier to catch COVID-19 in our community. In Laredo, we have observed about a 6% of COVID-19 new infections that result in admissions to the hospital. That is 211 new COVID-19 admissions. Our ICUs and ICUs across Texas cannot take much more. COVID-19 ICU patients do not leave the ICU quickly. The Laredo Emergency Operations Center is greatly concerned about hospital capacity in Laredo and in our region. The community must come together to protect themselves and others from COVID-19. This is a moment in our history where Laredo must turn the tide. Hunger down for a better future for you and your fellow Laredoan. Vaccines. Laredo Health received an additional 300 vaccines for second round of doses. The scheduling portal prior to being opened was updated to include 270 doses a day. This is this week's current capacity. We are working to expand our vaccine administration capacity. The vaccine portal is closed today. The all appointments have been filled for this week. We at the City of Laredo Health are experiencing high volumes of calls. Please know your call is important to us and we are working to assist you as soon as possible. Week six, week six allocation information was released on Saturday. The city of Laredo as a whole will only be receiving 1,300 doses. 1,200 of these are to be sent to Laredo Health Department. These vaccines will be placed into the scheduling portal for the eligible populations for, the, for next week. The 100 remaining were allocated to Webb County Indigent Healthcare. This week, Laredo Health is working on providing second dose vaccines to those who receive vaccines via the initial allocation by Laredo Health. There is information that is being reported on GSH, GSHS website of 1,700 vaccines that are available. All these vaccines are not available for first time inoculations. That number does include second dose vaccines. Second doses for the vaccines provided at TAMU are, are, being scheduled, are, are already being scheduled. If you did not provide a telephone number during the TAMU event, please contact 311 to be transferred to a scheduling operator for TAMU second doses only. This event will be taking place at the Sames Auto Arena January 26th through the, point, through the 30th by appointment only. I would like to share that the January 26th day has already been fully scheduled and we are working to, con to complete the January 27th operation day to be fully scheduled by the end of today. Just a little update in, in Espanol. Se han reportado más de 50 muertos por COVID-19 en, en Laredo durante el mes de enero. Texas ha reportado más de 3,600 muertos en los últimos 14 días. Cada vida, vida perdida impacto, impacta incon, incontables más. Estos, estos son nuestros seres queridos, vecinos, compañeros tejanos. No son estadísticas. Durante los últimos siete días en Laredo, Nosotros informaron más de 3,500 casos nuevos. Es probable que, no, que, que nunca haya sido tan fácil de contagiarse de COVID-19. En Laredo hemos observado que el 6% de nuevas infecciones por COVID resultan en la admisión, a la, a, admisión al hospital. Es decir, de 211 nueve admisiones por COVID-19. Nuestras ICUs y ICUs en todo el estado de Texas, Texas no pueden soportar mucho más. Los pacientes del, del ICU de, de COVID-19 no se a, abandan la ICU rápidamente. El Centro de Operaciones de Emergencias en Laredo está muy preocupado por la capacidad de, hospital, de los hospitales en Laredo y en nuestra re, uh, región. La comunidad debe unirse para protegerse a sí mismo y los demás de COVID-19. Ese es un momento en la historia en, en el que Laredo debe cambiar el rumbo. That is my report. Thank you very much. 
Thank you so much, Mr. Chamberlain, for your report. Now we hear from Loretto's Health Authority, Dr. Victor Trevino. Thank you. Good afternoon, Dr. Victor Trevino, Health Authority of City of Laredo. First of all, I do want to wish and say my condolences to the families of those that we have lost. Speaking about the hospital update, as of this morning, the hospitals continue to be in overflow with 27 patients waiting and holding in our local ERs. Last week, we reported 35 deaths in our community which is difficult to bear as a medical professional. Our COVID census continues to be between 50 and 60% of all hospitalized patients. We're literally, to quote a letter from the medical community, in COVID hell. The hospitals, to their credit, have made room within their facilities and additional treatments are being given in the infusion center and all the COVID nursing homes, and all the nursing home that's COVID. An alternate care site is also in the works. However, and unfortunately, all of these efforts are, are outpacing the amount of viral spread that is killing the people in our community unnecessarily. Now, speaking about the update on the vaccine, as we continue to educate the public, I do want to reinforce and make it clear that the vaccine does not make you 100% immune from getting infected or infecting others. No COVID vaccine does that. It is not a cure. People that have received the first dose need to continue to wear their mask and follow the guidelines. The first dose gives some protection after seven to 14 days. However, this vaccination has been tested and approved under a two dose environment, which is essential to getting up to 94 to 95% efficacy. You can still get infected between the first and second dose. Ahora en español. Buenas tardes, Dr. Victor Treviño, Autoridad de Salud de la Ciudad de Laredo. Y quiero desear mis más sentido pésame a las familias de las personas que hemos perdido. Hablando de actualización de los hospitales. A partir de esta mañana, los hospitales continúan desbordados con un 27 personas esperando en la sala antes de ser admitidos. La semana pasada informamos 35 muertes en nuestra comunidad, lo cual es difícil de soportar como profesional médico. Y nuestro censo de COVID sigue siendo y estando entre 50 y 60 por ciento de todos los pacientes hospitalizados. Estamos literalmente, para citar la carta de la comunidad médica, en un COVID infernal. Y los hospitales, para su crédito, han hecho espacio dentro de sus instalaciones y se están administrando tratamientos adicionales en el centro de infusión y en el asilo de ancianos. También se está trabajando en el sitio de atención alternativo. Sin embargo, y desafortunadamente, todos estos esfuerzos no están superados a la cantidad de propagación viral Eso es matando a las personas en nuestra comunidad innecesariamente. Ahora, para hablar de la actualización sobre la vacuna, como nos dijo el director del de Centro de Salud, a medida que continuamos educando al público, quiero volver a enforzar y dejar en claro que la vacuna no hace 100% inmune o a infectarse las personas o infectar a otros. Ninguna vacuna actualmente lo hace. No es una cura. Las personas que han, sido, que han recibido su primera dosis deben de continuar usando su máscara y seguir las pautas de prevención que hemos dicho. La primera dosis brinda cierta protección después de 7 a 14 días. Sin embargo, esta vacuna ha sido probada y aprobada en un ambiente de dos dosis lo cual es esencial para que para alcanzar la eficacia de 94 95 y aún puede infectarse entre la primera y segunda dosis. Ese es mi reporte. Gracias. Thank you, Dr. Treviño, for your report. Now we hear from our honorable mayor, Pete Sainz. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us and media partners. Uh, thank you for those reports. My condolences as always. Uh, to the families and friends of those that have passed uh, 
and to those undergoing uh, the illness, uh, our prayers and thoughts uh, for your complete recovery. Uh, this weekend, a lot of activity, as you know, uh, we've had a, a second alert. And as uh, Chief uh, Heard mentioned, it's not to create panic, but yet, you know, to bring uh, strict awareness as to the intensifying and, and deteriorating as, as uh, time goes uh, forward. Uh, uh, and and hopefully people can adhere to that. Uh, there's been a lot of talk in social media as to whether in fact we should shut down uh, the city completely. Uh, council and we have two agenda items that, that uh, lend themselves uh, toward uh, this uh, discussion. Uh, but this is, uh, you know, you know, an ongoing issue that we've had. We uh, we do have uh, some parameters here that that uh, keep us uh, under some you know some uh, restriction here as far as the city and what we can do legally. Uh, but of course, that's that's going to be discussed uh, uh, tonight. Uh, uh, it's my understanding too, and and. Uh, PD. Uh, on, on how best we can enforce whatever rules we have, uh, primarily uh, uh, these areas where where people actually remove their masks, and, and we know what those areas are, and uh, they're primarily restaurant bars uh, and also uh, family gatherings. Uh, you know, we we got to mention. become blacks uh, when within family members or a family setting. And uh, and we do have a, a, uh, a restriction, uh, a curfew, if you recall, after 10 o'clock, only the household uh, uh, is violating that, that uh, guideline. Uh, so uh, council will, I'm sure we'll have a very healthy uh, a debate tonight as to what else what else can we do as a city given the restrictions uh, that the governor's order uh, gives us uh, and and I understand the doctors you know, doctors in plural uh, and and their concerns uh, with with the science but yet there's there's a legal uh, side to it and and uh, which also is very much bearing on the decisions that we make uh, as a as a city uh, uh, and and the consequences uh, that we do violate uh, the uh, governor's orders. Uh, uh, a few to mention is is basically once if if, if in fact we do exceed the governor's orders, uh, will be immediately uh, sued upon not only by the us in violation or exceeding our authority in carrying out uh, whatever the city uh, will consider uh, so so not only the governor but also uh, uh, there's there's a potential liability for the city as some people of, of uh, public figures uh, to to adhere to uh, some people may say well uh, the oath is Well, it's an immoral law. You know, we shouldn't be following uh, or enforcing immoral laws. But that's that remains for debate as well. Uh, uh, so you know, there's there's two sides to all of this. You know, obviously, the health of our people is first and foremost. By all means, uh, no one questions that. And uh, I personally, you know, uh, want the best for our community. Uh, but it appears, based on what I hear uh, from management uh, and uh, and our legal department uh, is that the, the avenue, the channel that we have is yes, shut down, shut down businesses through enforcement. Whoever's violating uh, those those orders, uh, by all means, you know, we should strictly enforce the law and shut them down. Uh, and uh, and I believe uh, uh, we can't go too too much into the details of what PD has been. Uh, 
you know, unless the chief uh, and I see him there, if, if he wishes to, to speak to that, uh, but uh, but that's that's the avenue. I, I absolutely, violators should be should be shut down uh, through enforcement, uh, and that's really the avenue. And also families too. Uh, anyone exceeding the uh, household numbers, you know, should also uh, be reminded or, or at least uh, enforced uh, also strictly. Uh, so anyway, these are areas that uh, possibly legal or, or the chief, and I'm sure council is going to be uh, discussing in, in detail uh, tonight. But this is what we're we're confronted with, uh, and, uh, and and rightfully so. Uh, you know, all of these issues need to be discussed and will be discussed uh, tonight you know, for the betterment of our of our people. But then again, the other area is personal responsibility. Uh, we all have a responsibility as a citizen, uh, as a father, as a mother, uh, as, as a resident uh, of uh, taking care of ourselves and, and, and others. Uh, and this is why we've been sending those alerts. It's been two alerts. We don't want to violate that also. Uh, but when circumstances dictate a, uh, a an, an alert to that magnitude, we'll do it uh, over and over again if necessary. Uh, but I'm hoping that these discussions that we've been having here publicly and through social media, that people understand the gravity, uh, the severity of this, uh, of this nature of this pandemic, uh, and it's uh, gripped us like like nothing before. So anyway, I, in español, mis condolencias, gracias a todos ustedes por estar aquí. Mis condolencias a las familias, amistades de las personas que han fallecido, a las personas que están sufriendo. En, en diferentes maneras uh, con el COVID, uh, en los hospitales, en las casas, en los centros de infusión, en nuestras oraciones y, y, y buenos pensamientos que ojalá salgan de esta tempestad. Uh, ese es el deseo de todos nosotros. Uh. Hemos escuchado bastante este fin de semana sí, en las redes sociales, uh, en, en todas partes, que debemos de cerrar, cerrar la ciudad totalmente, uh, shut it down, como dicen. Uh, uh, pero también hay dos o tres aspectos sobre eso también. Uh, otras ciudades han intentado eso y han sido uh, uh, por órdenes del gobernador uh, traído de las cortes y, uh, y, y no, han, no han salido adelante estas ciudades. Uh, eso no se queda nosotros. Por parte de nosotros hemos uh, coordinado prácticas por el departamento legal aquí de la ciudad. los límites que nos dan las, las órdenes de emergencia del gobernador uh, y, y me dicen que ya hemos llegado a ese punto. Los, los puntos que tenemos es de, sí, cerrar negocios, pero los culpables, el que está culpable, eh, que sea violador, con toda fuerza de la ley, uh, debe ser cerrado porque saben bien qué es la ley, qué es la orden y si están ellos uh, o, los, o los gentes de que visita sus negocios uh, no, no poniendo atención y violando la ley y causando uh, ese potencial que alguien más se va a enfermar o morir. Con toda razón tenemos ese derecho como municipio y eso es algo que en los últimos días, uh, más que nunca, uh, el departamento de, de policía, el management también, el street y el equipo de él también uh, han, han sido muy, muy fuertes sobre eso. Uh, Y, y, y tenemos todo, toda razón. Esa es una área también, en áreas donde se, se estapa uno el, el, el tapabocas, el cubrebocas. Esas son las áreas que, que estamos poniendo mucho más atención, a, a que serán los, los restaurantes, bares. Y también hay que mencionarlo a, en nuestros hogares, a, en nuestras familias, las reuniones que tenemos. A, Y tengo que recordarles, hay un, un, un toque de queda también uh, en, en, en nuestras casas, en nuestros hogares, donde vivimos. Uh, ya después, al partir de las 10 de la noche, no debe de haber nadie más, menos las personas que viven, que conviven ahí en esa casa, en ese hogar, uh, si no están en violación también. Uh. So, todo tipo de, de área donde uh, se, se quitan uh, o, o se descubren uh, la máscara, hay el potencial ese de esparramar el virus uh, y eso es donde nosotros uh, 
el, nuestro city manager también puede hablar sobre esto, puede, nos estamos enfocando, ¿va? y hay ciertas uh, leyes que sí podemos uh, uh, aplicar, enforzar a, a lo más grave de, no, de lo que requiere esa ley, pero hacerlo también de, de, en forma uh, que, no, uh, no, que, que sea legal, también no vamos a, a violar tampoco nuestros uh, Uh, o los derechos de nuestra gente también, uh, pero si la gente esa está violando, esperen uh, llevarlos a, a corte y cerrar los negocios uh, y eso es lo que estamos enfocándonos más uh, para el bien de, de nuestra comunidad, uh, porque todos los días vemos estos reportes están aumentando más y más, los médicos con toda razón nos dicen cierren, cierren, cierren uh, pero el gobernador y, y las leyes nos dicen Cierren con ciertas medidas, apliquen o enforcen nomás lo que se puede enforzar uh, y, y enfóquense en, en los violadores, no, no, no todo en general, en los violadores. Uh, y, y eso es lo que nos estamos enfocando con el municipio. Buenas noches, tenemos uh, un City Council Meeting y ahí lo vamos a discutir en, en todo tipo de detalle. Y, uh, y ahí el concilio hace sus decisiones, pero me imagino que van a escuchar el, uh, el pro y el con uh, los beneficios y, y, y lo que no es sea beneficiable de, de un beneficio para la comunidad también pero uh, vamos, vamos a ver qué, qué decisiones saca el concilio a la noche, gracias uh, si hay preguntas uh, con todo gusto Thank you, Mayor, for your report now we call on our Webb County partners, today we have Webb County Judge Tano Tijerina Gracias, señora. Ojalá que estén todos bien, uh, que estén todos, uh, todo lo más posible uh, cuidándose, es muy importante. Hoy sí le estoy de acuerdo con el mayor diciendo que necesitamos uh, la ayuda. Hay mucha gente que lo está llamando a diferentes lugares, diferentes restaurantes que le dicen que están un poquito haciendo de más, están muy, mucha gente sin máscaras, no están haciendo el la visión social, hay muchas cosas que sí hay mucha gente que lo está diciendo, pero realmente nosotros, como la ciudad de Laredo, nomás podemos hacer lo que tenemos, lo que podemos hacer por el, la orden del gobernador. Y vamos a seguir con la orden del gobernador, no más, no menos. Uh, les digo uh, que hay mucha gente que también hay unas cosas uh, que están todavía por los niños y aquí razón haciendo unos programas y están diciendo que por qué realmente sí se puede, no lo podemos, pero mayor, le quiero decir que con todo, uh, si necesita ay ayuda, con, con todo lo que necesitamos de, de enforzar lo que tenemos ya escrito, ya en orden, por favor, ya sabe Chief Treviño que estamos ahí en su orden, eso no problema con eso, ¿ok? Um, I just wanted to let everybody know I'm, I'm with the mayor on this. You know, there's only so much that we can do. I know that he gets the calls, we get the calls as well. Um, trying to ask if, you know, some people are doing more. Some people, you know, basically saying, you know, some of these restaurants have way too many people, no social distancing, no mask. I understand all that. Um, there's some people that are complaining about even from, you know, the Martha's and the Pocahontas and they're moving their stuff, you know, a little over, you know, why are we still having some of these things? You know, uh, even the fair, you know, why are we having it? Guys, all I could say is that we have to adhere to the governor's orders as much as possible. Um, we can't really do more than that. We can't supersede it. to keep everybody safe um, and again I think the key word here is and going back to the mayor um, he did say that we need to enforce so as a county uh, county judge on behalf of the county whatever the chief chief Ferino needs mayor whatever y'all need from our from from our sheriff's department our constables our um, our law enforcement whatever y'all need Please, would we'll be willing to help to enforce however we can. That is pretty much all I have. Uh, my condolences to all that have that are suffering. Um, it's a very difficult situation right now, but things will get better. 
And I know it because we're just the type of people that we are, we are resilient people. Um, yes, we all have our um, opinions. And I will say that a lot of people think that they know much more than, than maybe than, than the, that they really do. But there's a lot to this. I mean, we have to we have to find a median somewhere to keep people safe yet to keep moving. This too shall pass. Uh, we just have to take a deep breath, relax, and be steadfast and know who we are and and what we're doing. So I uh, thank you all. I ask you all to keep being safe. If not, start being safe. But all this too shall pass. So God bless you guys, and that's all I have today. <laughs> Thank you, Judge, for your report. Um, we have our city manager, Robert Eats, just um, for questions, if any, and we do have a lot of questions. So let me start getting straight into those real quick. Um, the first one is from Judith Rayo from uh, Univision and Fox. It reads, with the high demand for a vaccine, will the city consider a waiting list system to register all eligible community members to receive the vaccine and contact them once the vaccine is available, both in English and Spanish, please. Good afternoon. I'd like to share that the Emergency Operations Center has um, been looking into the waiting lists in other municipalities, and we have noticed that the waiting list is not functioning correctly for those municipalities. So as of this moment, a waiting list is um, not part of the emergency operation plan. Um, en español, ahorita hasta el momento utilizando una, una lista de citas que están en espero. Um, nosotros en el, en el, um, en el centro de emergencias, um, no vamos a utilizar una lista en, hasta este momento. Thank you. The next question is from Telemundo and it reads, Dr. Treviño, puede adelantar un poco de lo que planea tratar esta noche en la Junta de Cabildo? Um, if you can do it also in English and Spanish, please. Yes, uh, thank you for the question. As we know, we have the city council meeting tonight and uh, my recommendations will be given there and uh, I am in line with the medical community and the medical letter that had been given out in November. These recommendations will be in line with that. And uh, I will be discussing further details with my medical advisory committee today prior to the city council meeting. En español, sí, gracias por la pregunta. Y línea con la carta de que se ha puesto en frente desde noviembre a uh, que yo actualmente también firmé y estas recomendaciones van a ser basadas en datos científicos y recomendaciones médicas y durante el curso del día estaré en contacto con mi comité de consejería de, de mi uh, advisory committee de, para, la, para la health authority de Laredo. Gracias. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Treviño, for that. Um, the next question, it reads, ¿Discutirán en la Junta de Cabildo de hoy implementar nuevas medidas restrictivas tomando en cuenta el desbordamiento de los hospitales y todas las muertes? Sí, precisamente. Sí, hoy, hoy esta noche va a haber una, una reunión de Cabildo y esas preguntas se van a discutir uh, en, en detalle. Uh, so, so por favor, uh, esperen el resultado después de la, de la Junta. Gracias. Mayor, there, there is a follow-up question to that um, in English, though, but maybe we can explain, you know, what measures can the city take without going against the governor's executive order. And that's uh, also the reason why we, we haven't been able to do such thing. Okay, I think I, generally I touched on them, but I was gonna ask maybe uh, our legal department uh, to, to kind of summarize maybe the areas uh, 
to you know, to give you the legal perspective. Uh, uh, so if, if we have Mr. Benavides uh, or, uh, or or Ms. Hale, you know, whichever. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Mr. Mayor. I don't know if Ms. Hale is here. She if she is, if she can address. Otherwise, uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, we'll discuss further uh, at tonight's meeting what these restrictions are. But as you have previously stated, um, the city of Laredo is restricted legally by what the governor's orders are. And so therefore, there are many things that I guess we can consider. I know Ms. Hale is there. I don't know if you want to take over, Ms. Hale. You're on mute. Okay, sorry. So essentially, Mayor, everything there's nothing additional that we can impose at this time that um, we're allowed to do by state law. And we've actually, um, we've asked the governor on several occasions to please give us additional leeway because of our particular situation. And unfortunately, um, he's not willing to do so and has asked us to simply enforce the orders that he has in place. We, we've actually um, been able to implement a curfew um, for social gatherings, which is something that no other city has been able to do. And he did give us that that um, that right to do. Aside from that, there's really nothing else that we can do um, currently. Yeah, one other point that I do want to mention, uh, and I don't want to speak for, for PD or law enforcement, uh, now keep in mind that if that if uh, there's a the governor's orders and then uh, should council supersede or exceed that and require law enforcement to to enforce uh, something that may be perceived uh, as as improper uh, or illegal or superseding uh, it puts law enforcement in a very very awkward situation uh, uh, you know they they also take oaths I mean they're you know, do we follow the governor's orders or do we follow city council's orders? Uh, uh, and what's what takes uh, you know, primacy? Uh, so those are the questions uh, that, that that you know we enter into if if we deviate from the governor's orders. Uh, so uh, and police officers also take oaths uh, along these lines. And, and uh, anyway, that's another angle uh, toward this. Chief Trevino, were you wanting to say something? No, just to 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 respond to the statement made by the by the mayor is very true. Uh, we have been working with legal to make sure that the order that we have in place does not contradict or or, or go beyond what the the governor's order uh, what has been for you know that, that we've been working with. So we work with again the legal department and making sure that the, whatever enforcement we do is is it's it's in that line to, to, to be able to, to hold as far as any citations that, that we do issue. So we're working with management, working with uh, the legal department um, and making sure that the enforcement is fair and, and is following those, those orders by the state, by the governor. Thank you to all for that response. Um, the next question is from El Financiero and it reads, La preocupación nacional por la disponibilidad efectiva de la segunda dosis. Solo quisiera confirmar para dejar claro a los lectores que sí existe esta disponibilidad de acuerdo con el programa de la ciudad. In English, it would be if uh, with, with the second dose, if uh, in the city we do have that programmed in there into our, our uh, system that we have right now. Yo, yo he hablado con los um, proveedores de la, de la vacuna COVID-19 entre la ciudad um, de Laredo y ellos ya están recibiendo la segunda dosis para los um, diferentes organizaciones, por ejemplo, como HEB, por ejemplo, Health of Pharmacy. Ellos ya están recibiendo su, su um, ronda de segunda dosis y también aquí con nosotros en el Departamento de Salud ya estamos um, programando esta semana para utilizar um, los vacunas para seg segunda dosis. In English, um, I'd like to share that we are programming our second round doses for the initial individuals we have vaccinated here at the City of Laredo Health Department, and as well as I've been in contact with other COVID-19 providers in the City of Laredo to inquire if they have received their second doses of vaccines 
they have shared with me they are receiving their second doses of vaccine. So those allocations from the Texas Department of State Health Services are coming in. But yes, we have been made aware of potential future allocations that might be shortened, but we're very hopeful that that is not the case. And as more vaccines that are approved through the EUA emergency use authorizations come into play, there will be more availability of vaccines in the upcoming weeks and months. Thank you so much. Um, the next question is from Telemundo. It reads, ¿Qué consecuencias puede esperar una persona con COVID-19 que es sorprendida no respetando su cuarentena? ¿Y cómo se vigila a estas personas? So what, what consequences does a person who have COVID-19 is a surprise not uh, respecting their quarantine orders? And how do we um, make sure that these people are following their quarantine? Yes, this is Dr. Terminio. People that don't respect their quarantine and are infected with COVID-19 will spread the virus around and will make this, the surge of the virus more in our community. And ultimately, these people that get infected from, from one person will infect other people and our hospital will be overrun. So there'll be a time when that person that is not following the quarantine has to think that in case people get sick of other things, the hospital may not be able to even treat the non-COVID patients. So not about them, it's about the whole city and the relatives. Everybody, we're all involved in this. So this would be, this would be the Claro, tienen que pensar que van a potencialmente infectar a otras personas y estas otras personas a otras más personas y es, y es un, una cadena, es un, una cadena que se hace y, y se esparrama el virus en esta forma. Y por lo tanto, va a haber una uh, hospitalización tremenda que ya no se va a poder eh, tener pacientes en los hospitales y potencialmente se puede colapsar el sistema de salud local y esa cosa que no queremos y tra, tra, trascendiendo al, al efecto de que cuando quiere una persona ir para una enfermedad, una, un infarto, un ataque al corazón o un accidente, no va a haber lugar en el hospital para atender a esas personas y no solamente son otras personas que pueden ser personas dentro de su propia familia de esa persona Y también para recordarle que todos estamos juntos en esto. Thank you, Dr. Treviño. The next question is from Univision and it reads, it was projected every community member would be able to get the vaccine by mid spring or the summer. Is this timeline still on track or will the vaccine be available for the general public next year? It is still the projection that we will reach uh, we will reach herd immunity by between the months of July and at the, at the latest October 2020, 2021, excuse me. Okay. The next question is, where should one call to schedule the second dose if they receive the first dose at Tamiu 311 is not answering? Can we please clarify this? We, we're getting a lot of different questions on this as well. This is Omero Vasquez. On, on 311, actually, 311 is receiving the calls, and we do have a high call volume right now as they're transferring them over to the volunteers that are setting up the appointments. So there is a, a long call queue right now, but I just spoke to the coordinator that is there with the volunteers, and they're in the process of training more volunteers right now, and they just got new volunteers as well. So that should be helping that process in just a moment. But again, as the calls are coming in, they're being transferred over, so that way they can make the appointments. We do apologize for the wait, but staff is trying to make sure that they get all the correct information, so that way they can set up those appointments for the individuals. Mr. Chamberlain, can we also explain um, how people will be receiving a phone call if you had the first dose at Tamiu? 
Absolutely. As of Friday, Laredo Health and volunteer staff have been contacting the individuals via the telephone numbers provided in the MTRAC form at the time you drive through. The, the staff members at uh, that are um, scheduling for the TAMU second round doses at um, Sames Auto Arena will continue to be contacting these individuals over the course of today, tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday to schedule those vaccines. For those limited numbers of individuals who did not provide their phone number, they they will they are encouraged to call 311 to get through to the scheduling operator. Thank you. The next question, um, and I believe is the, no, I still have a little bit more, but uh, it says, has anyone locally tested positive after receiving the first dose of the vaccine? If so, how many and what happens in this case? Yes, this is Dr. Trevino. I have seen in my practice patients that have tested positive after the first dose and also actually get sick from COVID-19 even though they had the first dose. So it is known scientifically that the vaccine works to the percentage of about 95% after the second dose, but this we're relatively safe and that is not true. So it's very important to, to see this. We have been seeing it already and it is very important for people to keep that in mind and to keep on using their face masks, even though after they receive the second dose. On español, la pregunta es que si pueden infectarse después de la primera dosis de la vacuna. Eh, claro, y con toda certitud, y actualmente hemos visto pacientes en mi práctica que han enfermado después de la primera dosis, uh, hasta dos a tres semanas después de la primera dosis, cuando se supone que ya hay cierta inmunidad pero esto no los protege de que enfermen o que estén positivos y que enfermen del COVID-19 con enfermedades moderadas o significativamente altas. Así es que es muy importante que sigan con el tapabocas, de, especialmente hasta después de la segunda dosis, aún deben de seguir con el tapabocas. Similar que la vacuna de, de la influenza, la vacuna de, del coronavirus, posiblemente no va a ser efectiva después de un cierto tiempo cuando el virus sufra mutación, así como el virus de la influenza. Todas estas cosas son muy importantes y tenemos que tener que para poder dominar este virus. Thank you, Dr. Treviño. I do have a follow-up uh, question on the 311 situation. If 311 is not available, is there a direct number? Um, again, this is Alana Vasquez. Uh, 311 is available Monday through, uh, actually seven days a week, Monday through Sunday. Uh, so it is available seven days a week. The call center where they will be setting up the appointments is actually going to be from uh, excuse me, eight in the morning to five o'clock in the afternoon. 311 itself is open seven days a week from seven to 11. Uh, but for the appointments, it is from eight to five. Uh, with that as well, we wanna just reiterate that the volunteers are calling the members that filled out the form. So if you put the information there, they will be calling you and setting up that appointment. We're asking only if you know that you did not put in that information, if you can please call, because that will also help reduce the queue time or the amount of wait for the individuals that are having to call in. If you did put in your information, if you filled out the forms and put that information on there, you will receive a call. Thank you. Um, I believe that's all the questions we have for today. If anyone else needs to say anything, this will be your time. If not, then this will conclude our media briefing. Thank you so much.